measles and beaches and heartbreak. It's another week in Poplar, and we're talking about it on Call the Midwife. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hey, everybody. I'm Tamara Berg, <laughs> and this is Call the Midwife, Season 8, Episode 3. I'm joined in the studio by Courtney Stewart. Hello, hello, hello. John is not here. He is hello. home with the sniffles. sniffles. He is not feeling well, and uh, frankly, I told him I don't want to be near him, and I don't want anybody else <laughs> get near away, him. Get away, get <laughs> away. <laughs> so I banned him from the studio, <laughs> and he cannot be replaced, but I'm going to do my best to stand in for him. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Everybody. This was a heck of a show this week, Courtney. It was Am a I right? heck of a roller coaster again. All right, so let's yep. talk about Hazel Becker. She was yes. our nervous mom nervous who was mom. new in the hood. Um, coming in for her postnatal appointment, she, yes. and she did live in Cyprus. So, you know, interesting, as they were introducing Hazel, we were getting a lot of information about her. Yes. She's new in town. She has a baby, but not, not a brand a new, new baby. baby. Uh, she had lived in Cyprus. Mm -hmm. So, hmm, crazy, crazy disease, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, thinking, like, uh -huh. where, oh, what's going um, on there? And then... Immediately, they start talking about measles because yes. the measles are coming out. There, there's a new vaccination coming out in 1964, um, and Hazel is approached by, I think, it, who, who was uh, it? It was, was the new one the, of the new sisters. Uh, one of the new sisters, uh, not Hilda, but the other, the other one, one, whose name well, I, can't I can't remember, remember her moment. name. But she smiles all the time and is looking always very uncomfortable. And, She's the greenest of and the is new very sisters. cheerful. She's very cheerful and so and sweet. a little bit aggressive with her information. Yeah. So Hazel said, wait, what do you mean babies can die from measles? I see them, peop I see people in the street with measles. Yes. How come, ba what is that? Yep. So uh, she's all on board to get her baby. Yes. Or to uh, go to the, the talk. Right. The, to, they were going to go to the talk and learn about everything. And that exactly. was going to be great. But she was the only one that showed up. Yeah, because it was the, she was a little too aggressive. The, the <laughs> sister was a little too aggressive with her information. Um, yeah, her and so she later finds out though that her baby is a little bit too young to be vaccinated. Yes, she her was baby only is eight, eight months, months, and she needs to be ten. Right, Which exactly. You would think not such a big deal, but apparently, it well, was. and it was a trial, so a study. Yeah, and so you know they need to be very rigid about those um, rules and regulations with those things usually. So that may have been the reason That's why true. they couldn't fudge it with her That's baby true. Dawn. Uh, and Hazel leaves very upset. Well, she gave Sister Frances, thank you for that, Jeff, ah, in the booth. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she leaves Sister Frances with quite the uh, uproar and yeah. makes ever very makes a big scene in that whole situation. It was really uncomfortable. And I, my heart was breaking because you're watching this woman and you're like, she's nuts, but something else is going on, right. obviously. And exactly. It's very upsetting. But shout out, that baby was so cute. Oh, my God, the baby that with the cheeks. Cheeks, the cheeks, the jolly red cheeks. Oh, mm. Such a cute baby. Whoever's child that is, Dawn, baby Dawn was adorable. And large eyes and the yeah. eyelashes that looked almost like cartoon eyelashes. They were like little triangles. I know. Like she this. looked like a cartoon baby, like a drawing. She was so adorable. Very much like the Gerber baby, Super I cute. would say. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed, for sure. For yeah. Sure. Um, so then we get to see Hazel at home and discover that her husband sleeps on the couch. Yeah. Um, also, more information. It's like, oh, wait. Oh, what's is there really going trouble on? there? Mm -hmm. And then we discover, no, it's because the baby gets to sleep in the bed with Hazel. Yeah. Which is interesting, even Martin's though we don't couch. know all the details at this point. It's like, oh, that happens in families all the time. Absolutely. The wife is like super attached to the baby and doesn't want to let the baby go away. And so dad gets, you know, the big old shoe kicked yep. in the butt out yep. of the room. Yes, so. exactly. But he was still very... He, you know, he did his best to, yeah. yeah, to to be amenable to the situation, um, you know, because Mama's usually right, yeah. so you got to deal what with are you that. Gonna do? What are you going to do? So Dawn is flushed, and mm -hmm. Hazel instantly goes into like Mama mode, like Mama Bear super mode, panic, right? Mama yeah, uh, and she thinks something's really wrong. Takes her to the doctor and says, and the doctor says, well, she's teething. And I don't need to blind you with science, but. And then she freaks out and wants every single detail about teething. Yes. <laughs> oh, 
my gosh. I was like, oh, girl, it's really bad for you. It's really bad. I need to know everything. Everything. Yes. But we're still thinking like, you know, first mom jitters. Like, oh, what's really going on? This is germaphobe and crazy. Yeah, and babies do get fevers when, they, when they're when they teething. And they cry incessantly. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, honey. I was talking to someone today, my chiropractor actually, and uh, I told her that I watched the show, and she was saying, "Yeah, I can't, I can't watch that show because the crying babies." <laughs> <laughs> I wonder like, if it's actually a well, that, thing that, that people is one are, of the things that happens on that show for sure. Like that, some people are really sensitive to a constant like oh, baby yeah. crying. Like it's not quite as bothersome to me. Like right. I kind of can deal, but I know people that are just like I cannot even deal with like the slightest amount of time listening to a baby cry. It's like weird, like. Nails on a chalkboard for some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so uh, after uh, Hazel leaves, um, Sheila and Dr. Turner talk, and Sheila says, you know, maybe I, I, this is one of the things I love about that time. You know, maybe I should go by and see her. Yeah. You know, pop in, in. And, and give her a visit, to which Dr. Turner says, I think that would be very neighborly. You know, the, the idea that, I mean, like, I have lots of neighbors around me, and I don't know the first names of any of them. Yeah. Just as far as like neighbors go, let alone being you know practitioners I, in the yeah. community, I just think it's really quite lovely that it does that make she me does like, that. Sort of long for that type of community energy again. Yeah. Like, why don't we do that? We'd all be so much like happier and nicer to each other. Yes, we would. Yeah. Bring each other cakes and such. I know. Um, so Sheila goes by and visits and finds out that. Uh, um, uh, Hazel says, but I'm not a first time mom. I don't talk about it to anyone ever. And everyone said that that was the better way. That broke my heart. Right. Oh my God. Cause everybody telling you, you can't, I don't even know how that ever became a good idea in anybody's mind right. for anyone. Right. Like, I just, it's baffling and it's baffling also because it was a doctor telling her yeah. to do that. And I was just like, <gasps> Who I don't know how accurate. I mean, I'm assuming it's fairly accurate because most right. of the information about um, the passing of infants and things like that, it was very secretive and people didn't really talk about it. It wasn't right. a whole thing. And I, I just, I don't know where that would ever be. Cause we know we do ceremonies for death exactly. for a reason. Like we, and it's not exactly. like it's new that we do that. So the idea that you can't ever talk about the loss of your child, I, I don't even, where did that come from? Yeah. <laughs> no a little idea. bit later in this, in this um, storyline, they talk about the fact that she didn't go to the funeral. We are going to talk a little bit later about, um, you have some stuff about sudden infant death syndrome, yes. which is Once not they the, what they it called it then. Later. We're also yeah. going to talk about, um, uh, some things in the news about measles, so stick with us for that. But, um, but yeah, her, this idea that you know you don't talk about anything. I am a person who talks about my feelings. I always yeah. have been. Um, you know, things happen in families, and people are like, "Yep, yep, not going to talk about mm -hmm. it. We should don't want to share it." And I'm, I'm a firm believer in if it stays within you, it festers, and if it, and if it gets out, it. You know, what what's the saying about a, a trouble shared is a trouble halved? halved. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I that's wholly such a great believe thing. in that. Yeah. And it's weird to me, too, just because this is sort of post our... We, we, we had already started to do some sort of research and intellectualizing of psychoanalysis and emotional yeah. things and our issues. So the yeah. idea that at this point in time, because I assume the baby... What did, they, did they say three years ago? Yeah. Actually, uh, well, they did, I think they said it was three years ago. It was around three years ago, and the baby died at eight months old. Okay, so it, it, late 50s, early 60s. Like right. At this point, it's yeah. still, it surprised me a lot that that would be, from the medical professional, I think, is what was so bothersome, that they would say right. it's a good idea to suppress Clam and up. close yeah. off and like not even talk to your husband. Like, wow. Yeah. Very yeah. upsetting. Very, very, very upsetting. And, and she still doesn't even tell um, Sheila the details. No, she won't. She won't she talk doesn't. about it. She... So, so Sheila goes back and talks to Dr. Turner. He finds out from the um, medical records that her baby died at eight months. <clears throat> and Mrs. Higgins points out there is an anniversary coming up. Yes. That kind of coincides with Dawn's like age, age as well. A bit, yeah. So whether or not I, I don't know if they were they were necessarily connecting the two babies or that that you know this is the time of year that Stephen the original baby died. But yeah, there's an anniversary coming up. Yeah. So, and it was really nice <sighs> to see Mrs. Higgins. 
have a heart yes. and a soul and reveal herself a little bit because she's pretty persnickety. <laughs> yes, she is. Yes, she All is. All the time. She did take the liberty of tipping him out of the messenger, out of petty cash, but only six pence because he was chewing gum. <laughs> God forbid. God Such a good forbid. like character <laughs> sentence, she's you really know? She's great, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's really fantastic. I'm, I'm enjoying her very much. So then um, Hazel goes to a play group, which she was, it was recommended yes. to her, like, help get you in the community, yes. goes to a play group. And this child that I'm going to say probably had foot and mouth disease. She had those like, yeah, that, that would, red, red round the mouth cretinness. Yeah. yeah. And boy, <laughs> Hazel like smacked her away just for, which let's be real. I probably I was just going to say, <laughs> I had the same feel. Everybody was like, oh, no. I was oh, like, she had my child. I would have done the same thing. Pretty much. Because, Mom, you saw your kid got something going on, and there's a baby. Why didn't Mom snatch her kid back? Like, oh, oh don't, don't run. Yeah. No, I, I I don't fault you for that one, Hazel. I don't I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. But it was, she got up and out of there really quickly, and everybody is so shocked that maybe they didn't hit their kids. At that maybe. Time. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. Maybe they're progressive point? in certain ways, but not other ways. <laughs> Hazel gets home. She's changing her baby's diaper, nappy, and discovers she has a rash. Yes. It's raining outside. There's thunder and lightning. And she rushes to the doctor saying, I think my baby is dying. I know. And that wet hair holding the baby. Okay, yeah. Let's talk about that moment. That's where the tears are on here. The baby. So she's talking to Dr. Turner. Dr. Turner is trying to reassure her. It is not measles. It mm -hmm. is roseola and phantom. It is not serious. It's going to be okay. And and she's sitting there with her hair wet. The doctor's talking to her. And the all you can see is that baby's little baby hand. Dawn's yeah, hand pulling at her hair. her hair. I was bawling. It was so much. It was so much. Because at this point, we know she has had lost a baby. And like, oh, and she's freaking, ah. That was so great. And I, I'm sure that that, you don't make, you know, you can't coach baby, no, baby not actors. All. I'm sure it was just, you know, a, a real mo moment. But God, it was moment. so gorgeous, wasn't yeah, it? It was just perfect like it pulled every string exactly the way that it needed to be played in this harmonious orchestra of perfection it was beautiful so yeah in, and in that moment dr turner is addressing the fact that she lost her son she's a little bit shocked he says it's in your notes yeah. i i know about this and he says i you're a great mom i have every confidence in mm -hmm. you and she a little bit of light came back, but right. you can you can see that it was definitely still, girl. How are you gonna get through like yeah. the next? Because you're gonna constantly, constantly Forever. deal with that. But then Miss Higgins shows up again. Doesn't let her take the bus home. Put drives her home. On her, drives her home. Gets her ready for bed, like and a daughter. Yes. Yes, that was so sweet. It was so fluffing the pillows sweet. and making yeah. sure everything was okay. Yeah, and she totally like tucked her in like she was mom. And then Hazel describes the the pain that she has from losing this baby. She says it's an actual pain here in my chest, here. and I don't want it to go away because that would mean I'm forgetting, forgetting him. him. And that's an incredibly common reaction. Yeah. Um, it, pretty much every person I know in my life who has had any kind of grief. Um, from losing somebody has has said the same thing mm -hmm. to me. It's a physical pain mm -hmm. that you want gone, but you don't want gone because that's all you have left. Right, was there. And, yeah, and to think of it as a baby, like I, I can't. No, <laughs> I can't. I just. Whew. They made it really real for me. Yeah. Really and real. so many of us, you know, me included, through friends, have had similar um, scenarios to to consider mm -hmm. and so and that's one of the things that i think really makes this show hit home for all of us because we can connect in some way to every single story every single story yeah. every single time yeah yeah it's, it's oof. so then um hazel goes and looks in the box of um um mementos i mm -hmm. guess from steven's short life so there is a beautiful sweater and then the rattle with the sterling silver heart, heart. hanging off of it yeah. which was so beautiful and you know just incredibly evocative mm -hmm. and then a little bit later mrs higgins comes by again and gives a rose bush and um 
I did the same thing for friends of mine who lost a baby actually yeah. a couple of years ago. And so I, I was of course bawling yeah. my eyes out. She talks about Mrs. Higgins talks about how her parents died uh, in World, World War, II War II during an air raid and her uncle who was in Canada, Canada. couldn't get back over to see their uh, graves because their graves were in the UK. So he planted a rose bush in their memory. It brings us both comfort and, and brought her the rose bush. Go Courtney. <laughs> so I'm like going to cry right now <laughs> when she handed her the rose bush. Well, the rose bush. Yes. But also I just want to flip back a little bit yeah. when, um, Hazel was sitting on the bed and she was just kind of staring off at the window yeah. and her husband came in and he sat down on the bed next to her. And because oh, yeah, he had spoken to Mrs. Right. Higgins yes. and he was just, just barely touched her and was like, maybe it's okay if we like talk to each other and just, yeah. And he said, need I to need to talk about it. I need it. to talk about it. Yeah. And I just, I, I, the, the depth of all of that and her, the actress that played Hazel, she was so absent, almost like a ghost when he walked in the room and to pull that off. And obviously they lit it really yes, cool. Yes, yes. So she literally looked like a ghost. And the husband came in and they had that moment. And she, when she turned around, it was literally like him saying that was him giving her oxygen to like mm. live. And I just thought that how they composed that just went beautifully. Um, but then obviously Ms. Higgins in the next scene um, brings him the rose bush. And then we get to where she actually plants the rose bush outside when she's on the balcony. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to read what, what those last words were there because it was so beautiful. We can decide to be happy, make much out of little, embrace the warmth of our ordinary days. Life unfolds as a mystery, an enterprise whose outcome cannot be foretold. We do not get what we expect. We stumble on cracks, are faced with imperfections. Bonds are tested and tightened, and our landscapes shift in sunshine and in shade. There is light. There is. Look for it. Look for it shining over your shoulder on the past. It was light where you went once. It is light where you are now. It will be light where you go again. It will be light where you go again. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was so touching, so beautiful, and all... They, all the tears. Oh, they, and then adding the rattle to the rose. And, bush, that, right? Yeah, because she was holding that the rattle and sat it. Huh. And it was letting go, but having uh, and the light again thing. Just literally, I was bawling, crying, like curled yeah. up. Like, yeah. How how do they pull this off every single episode? And I don't I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and just so so beautifully done, a beautifully done storyline. Yes, 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 one hundred ten thousand percent. Yeah, kudos. And I want to say like, oh my god, this one has moved me more than like. <laughs> But I feel like it'll just be the same comment next week because I just don't know what else to expect. But like something about that rosebush, guys, and the idea that there's light again, even though we know these things, like the poetry of what they have been able to write with this episode just was overwhelming. Yeah. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed still. Yeah. Jeff in the booth is overwhelmed as well. Yeah, he's he crying. Is. You guys can't hear him. So get it together, guys. Like, I gotta produce I'm your so show. Sorry. <laughs> incredibly touching yeah. it's incredibly touching and it's you know the juxtaposition as well though because we constantly get the birth of babies and that's you know right. the breathing of new life and all that but the idea that these young lives also get harmed as well and can be lost it was hard to hard to cope with and episode. you know the thing that they do so well with this show is they you know are constantly reminding us that you know there's a cycle there yeah. there is a cycle with life and there is birth and death and they're incredibly yes. connected mm -hmm. and um and and we can't avoid either one of them nope and you know there there are trials and tribulations and we have to go through them all yes and thankfully we have called the midwife and the community that we think we're all in but we're not really but we are um of people yeah. like that with you know who deal with things with kindness and compassion and help yes. us get through it all right yes I want a midwife to be my friend. I know. Okay, Me guys. Too. And we're so <laughs> thankful that you guys are our friends out there and that you're listening yes. to us sob, sob on air right now I and know, talk about right? all this wonderful stuff. We appreciate you guys so much. You guys really, 
Our fans have helped make AfterBuzz TV literally the ESPN of talk. We have so many shows and so much wonderful content, and we thank you guys for letting us do that for you. But for, in order for us to continue to do it and to do it well for you, we need your help. So if you would just click that little red subscribe button that you see right below our video, we would appreciate it and love you incessantly for it. Make yes, sure right. you shoot over to iTunes if you want to just listen to us while you're working out or jogging. I actually do that. I was doing that at the gym today. Um, rate us on iTunes. We like five stars. Stars, but you know, yes, you if do. you got four and you got a question as to why or how we can get to five, let us know in the comments. Leave us comments on the YouTube videos. We love to chat with you guys and make sure you're with us socially on social media all the time. Twitter, we love it. We go back and forth with articles. Tammy's always got great stuff for you guys to look at after the show. So thank you again. We appreciate you guys as fans so much and just continue to give us love and we continue to love you guys. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Courtney. Thanks. So let's, let, let's next talk about Betty Marwick. <laughs> Um, and just side note, very funny. I could not figure out what her last name is. Me either. I I'm wrote, like, where did you find Marwick? Marwick? <laughs> Maui? Marwi? Marwick. Marwick. Okay. Um, Marwick. So she's a mother of five. Yes. She is pregnant. Her house is chaotic. Yes. She has a husband who is not there at the moment. He's out On at sea. Yeah. And the kids are not in school regularly because dang it, it's fun to have the kids around. Really, girl? <laughs> I do know a person like this um, mm -hmm. and wanted to keep her kids around all the time. And she had multiple kids. Yeah. And in this world, like four kids is like way too many kids yeah. in my life. Yeah. Um, but she had four kids and she just didn't want them to have to go anywhere. And I just didn't understand. And I love kids. Do not get me wrong. I don't have any children from my own body, but I have lots of children that I around love and adore yes. and I'm around constantly. Yes. Um, and I just, I don't, I don't quite understand that. Um, way of thought uh, but, no. <laughs> I don't either but I do appreciate that you love your kids girl but yeah send them to school please yeah, yeah. so Val and Lucille show up oh they also we also find out that her eldest son who was who was a K name Keith Keith is the baby that's born. So Keith is a bit of a rascal. He's a, a rapscallion. Yes. He's a hooligan. Not yeah. a hooligan, really. He's more of a rapscallion. <laughs> uh, so Val and Lucille are tending to Betty. And, she, you know, this She's old, This is old, yeah. old news to her. She's she done it five times. Time. She's doing it a sixth time. She's pretty much ready to drop the kid in the kitchen. Yeah. Didn't even the, want to go to the hospital nope. like he had been instructed. She was just like, I can do it right here. She's yeah. braiding hair, looking yeah. for a hairbrush. Like, it's going to wow. be fine. Yep. And then her baby is born uh, and has a cleft palate and cleft lip. And I love the way that Val uh, tells her, I don't want to alarm you. Mm hmm but I want to let you know, Kirk doesn't look quite like your others would have done. Yes. And we discover that he has the cleft palate. And none of these uh, women have actually seen it in real not life, in including real life. Val. They just know about it, yeah. Yeah. They've only learned it in studying and all right. of that, but not seen it in right. real life. But um, the uh, Betty had the best line when she said, I'm not trying to alarm you. And Betty was like, um, you're actually alarming me yeah. because you're being too kind. Hello. Right now. <laughs> it's like, yep. Be a little snarly to me and I will feel better. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so... We so um, Betty gets to see the baby, sees that he has a cleft lip, understands that he has a cleft palate. P.S. Stephen McGann explained how they um, that baby was not a baby with cleft palate. They did oh. it with CGI. Oh, so sometimes they're real babies and sometimes they're not. This was an animatronic baby with CGI, CGI. Con con um, combined to make it look so lifelike. Wow. Filmmaking, I know, incredible, Amazing. right? So we find out that the baby is going to need surgeries. She needs help with feeding. And Betty is overwhelmed. I can't do it, she says. That understood. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's quite overwhelming. And it's going to be a completely different um, first couple of years mm -hmm. with this child from her other children. Exactly. Yeah. And she does not have the support. Not at all. And that was a great monologue for uh, Dr. Turner when he was talking about how many situations he's seen over his entire career yeah. of women who you know don't have any support and for various reasons whether you know dad is working away or, dad or dad's dead a drunk. or dad's a drunk and mm -hmm. all of the things that are options but these women in this neighborhood that he's been in all this time always are able to somehow make it work but not necessarily be thriving right and yeah i thought that was so amazing because women 
are superstars. Yeah, and that is something that has not changed. Has not changed, ever. You know, the midwives are superstars in the show, but so are the women who are raising these kids in these And various... keeping it all together. And keeping it together. Yeah. How? Yeah. How? Um, I really love the way that Val explained the the um, cleft palate mm -hmm. to Betty and showed her how to put her finger inside so she could feel where it was. Yeah. And Betty was so concerned about I'm hurting, hurting him. Pain and, and, yeah. and, you know, so that that whole explanation, because that's the thing. You're kind of sitting there going, oh, oh you no. know, yeah, what yeah. is this? Is it is it a wound? She was like, it's not an injury. Yeah, it's exactly. Just think of it how he's made. And that was a very lovely way to describe it. And it was so interesting because it, that's the thing she needed to be able to understand to actually feed her baby. Right? Yes. Because you have to put the bottle in the right spot. Right. And, and it has further to back down. or further yeah. on the side and everything. So, yeah. So she takes her to a doctor's appointment. And basically, the doctor tells her everything that could go wrong. Yes. And You're, he was very cold about it. He pretty much was. And, oh. you know, I know all of these people think they're being helpful. They think they're being, um, you know, they're giving information. Um, yeah. They're being very clinical about it. But, yeah, that was an overwhelming moment for this mom sitting there with her baby going, and this could go wrong, and this could go wrong, and this is your next six months and yeah. 12 months and five years. Yeah. Thanks for all of that information. Yeah. I was really glad that Val was there for her. Yeah, well, the, I think Dr. Turner is the one that said she will definitely need somebody with her. And But then she goes through all of that only to go back thinking she could stay in the maternity home, I believe. And then the kid, the woman that was watching the kids or whatever happened like that. Right, and she freaks out. She freaks out and can't take care They're of the kids. They're too much. They're too much. And now she's got to leave after all that information and then still function in right. regular world and she's like i gotta go I, I got kids and the kid her children so the other thing is that valerie uh had phyllis help her um introduce the oh, yeah, child yeah. with the the facial an anomaly um to her children by showing them a photograph, photograph first. Yeah, that was really sweet i thought it was inc again incredibly sensitive yeah. like really very very a very careful way to do it mm -hmm. um so then right we go back to the house there is no help she's overwhelmed val visits the police come right mm -hmm. uh because keith is in trouble for Back driving up. recklessly on motorcycles um there's problems with kirk has aspirated milk so there may be he may now start being Getting being started having the start of an infection, infection has to go on antibiotics and betty is just finally like you know what i think i might need I, to put this baby yeah, up for adoption i don't think i can do it it's too much and she says better i i keep thinking it would be better if i'd let him slip away what kind of monster does that make me oh, that was so harsh but the compassion when the Val. response to yeah. that was no that makes you a mom because you want to protect him you're not a bad person how do they know the right thing every time? They're well practiced at it. And they're, <laughs> they're kind and lovely people. Yeah. And so Val talks about that with Sister Julianne. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she may be considering adoption. Sister Julianne is trying to offer so many solutions. Yeah. Maybe she needs to get them into school more regularly. And Val's like, yeah, that's that's just the beginning just of the, the beginning. problem. <laughs> exactly. Like, that's where we can start, maybe. But Yeah, and so Val does. She decides, we'll start somewhere. Let's yes. at least try and give him a chance. And when she showed up yeah. in her red suit jacket or sweater or something she had on, so cute. Yeah. She's like gives the oldest kid orders immediately he's got a job. what he's got to do and yep. he's like oh, oh okay yeah and it was great get I him out that. the door the last kid with the backpack it was great i loved it uh fashion note since john's not here we're going to talk at a bit about it at length. <laughs> um val's outfit on the second school day that she was helping out the blue sweater with the plaid pants oh yeah oh my god i want those i want that yeah. outfit uh, they have some good I stuff. super loved yeah. that outfit with the high-waisted yeah. pants. High-waisted pants. Oh, cute little cute crop little sweater. Lace. So cute. So yeah. cute. Always so cute. For sure. So Betty's in a new routine. <laughs> and she and Keith, I, I, it's, I, it's, I'm pretty sure it's Keith. Keith or Kyle. Um, sticks up for Kirk when they're walking out with the yes, pram. Yes. Right? And I will say, first of all, that was awesome that he stood yeah. up to them. And I love that she was like, oh, you're being polite. 
but yeah, thanks. I'm glad you did that. <laughs> yes. I love that. Yes. But that also speaks to how the balance, because call the midwife, a lot of people could be like, oh, there's so much sap and goodness all just mixed in, but right. it still shows that like, people are assholes. Sorry, yeah. for, but the people are assholes, and especially at because uh, we didn't say it at the um, before she left the maternity. Oh, home, right. With a little crabby way. Eh, I know she's got Beyond. a baby with problems, but can you like give them a private room as if the woman can't hear you? There's not a door like she's right there. And then when she left and that same woman with right. another woman, they said, isn't that like your worst, worst nightmare, nightmare as a mother? No. no, my worst nightmare as a mother would be to not go home with my baby. Exactly. You jerk. Like people are awful. But thank you, Call the Midwife, for giving us balance because the reality is is that they're great people and not so great people all the time that we have to deal with. So true. Yep, loved it. So true. So now that Betty's in a new routine, oh, and Kirk has gained three ounces. Yes, he yes. is. He's thriving. She says, tell the adoption agency not to bother. Yay. Adoption agency not to bother. It was so great. It was so great. It's so great. And then husband surprisingly comes home. Because he's about to have his first surgery. So she's at the hospital. I, can I just say this is, I think, my favorite scene. I, I'm, I'm Right? I, no, I mean, it's I'm, been eight years, but I'm pretty sure this is bald. my favorite scene. I bawled at this one. I'm this going is to where give I this, went, like, like, yeah, I think I'm going to give this the, the gold star winner when he clapped for her yeah. and that baby because was like, that was the callback <laughs> y'all because she had said nobody clapped right because when the first baby was born it was a party there was applause, applause. And even there my people, husband applauded in the and hallway people clapped and i had all this going on nobody all the claps support for and this love. one and to have him be standing there and clap for, i was like <laughs> no i had i had the pew tears just like spitting out of my eyes that was the that was the moment that like <sighs> super got me yes and we get a lot of like yay the woman you know pulled through and these midwives always come through and are so strong and so awesome and it was just so great to also see the husband get to have a moment where he know he gave her support in a way that she just didn't expect didn't know and we were so happy for her because she needed it and it was the perfect support like it connected yeah. to who she is as a person to him who she is as a mother yeah. her you know strength yeah. her perseverance and like only she would get it in the way that yes. he delivered that and he celebrated her for yeah. being everything that she's had to be without his help and i think that was just so beautiful he's and then when he sees this baby he says oh he's gorgeous Yes, he is. You guys just want us to be in the crawling ball floor mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't even speak English just then. You didn't. But no, it was <laughs> like... And it doesn't matter. But it was great. It, it was really that was, great. Yeah. I loved that. I loved the applause moment. That yeah. was that, just like true joy. I think I'm never going to forget that. Yeah. Ever. But it was beautiful. So next, we're going to move on to Violet. Yay. I've got a couple of little tweets here. I'm just saying. So She's right a there. winner. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, yeah, and there were lots of tears. Secret agent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Violet wins the council seat. There are flowers everywhere. Yeah. And Reggie calls to congratulate her. So precious. Love it, love it, love it. And one of the first things that happens is, is that Phyllis wants there to be a beach for the bank holiday. <laughs> It was so random to me, but I was like, okay, okay. all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Phyllis is having a little trouble with the Cubs, and Sergeant Wolf offers to help. Yes, he does, because Sergeant Wolf's got a crush. Yeah. Love it. The sand is delivered early. It blocks the Phyllis's car. <laughs> the it's a problem. The comic relief of the episode, when the kitties are making it their home for defecation. Yes. <laughs> It's a big old litter box. <laughs> and I had just been thinking, where is Monica Joan this episode? And there she there comes. There she is, shooing the trying cat. Trying to shoo the kitties away. Trying to shoo the kitties um, away. The meeting at the dinner table at Nanata's house with oh, Violet, yes. Violet running things and yes. delegating yes. everything. Yes. yes. And yes. being the ringmaster of the circus. It was, it was like the restrained, you know, comic delight, mm -hmm. I think, is sort mm -hmm. of how we would describe that part. Agreed. Agreed. Funny, and I silly. Love them at the table. I love the uh, midwives all in their, you know, day attire. So yes. They're yes. so colorful. And then we have the couple of nuns over there and just having Phyllis at the head and Violet at the other side. Like, just they composed that shot so well. And just it was just jolly and also like 
Violet is trying to it, it was just great. I didn't have words again, guys. Sorry. Like I don't know what I'm saying. Sometimes we don't. It was great. It was great. Uh then we have the beach day. We ultimately get to the beach day. Oh, and there needs to be a pool. There needs to be a wading pool. Uh, but she that was like something the else. Best but... kitty wading pool I ever, ever seen. Like it yeah. wasn't and I'm that like, it's not 1964. how they looked in America in sixty four. Exactly. I'm just saying not that I was here then, but but yeah, I'm sure they didn't look like that. No, here. it like had like a little step up and it was a nice like, it looked very modern. Not only modern, it looked very sturdy. Yes, that too. Most things in the 60s were made out of plastic yeah. in America anyway. Including and, the uh, 80s and 90s when I was a kid, when we had a kiddie pool, it was an ugly plastic thing with like random fish or something all on it and it yeah. was shallow and not great. It not was cute. not great. Not okay? cute. But this that one looks was fantastic. Cute. Yeah. yeah. Violet cuts the ribbon and says, oh, I feel like the queen. <laughs> I found delightful. It was. And we had a lovely, so not exactly a montage, but a series of shots so, yeah. of the beach day. Um, people in the, putting their face in the, whatever that's called, the little vignette. It's, and yeah. And I let, I really loved the quick shot. The two two quick shots I really loved were Dr. Turner, um, like wearing sunglasses and carrying, I don't know, a basket or a chair or mm -hmm. something across in his like khakis and sweater. Know, and then down. Val eating ice cream. Val eating the ice cream. I liked when uh, uh, Trixie was like in the ice, I guess it was ice cream truck, not a food truck. And she's kind of like out the window. Yes. And there's somebody, I forget, I think it might have been Lucille, Lucille standing heck, yeah. um, down there that was just really cute and so 60s looking and yes. so pretty and then miss phyllis yes. in her lounge chair with her sandals on because earlier socks. in the episode we talked about her toes <laughs> wearing socks with her sandals wearing because socks with her sandals she did not get a pedicure she did not what she did get was three cheers from sergeant wolf with the with the cubs, cubs. sergeant wolf and the cubs Interesting. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. It was great. And the nuns getting to splash their little feet. Very the, cute. Very sweet. It was very very fun. lovely. Um, all right. What else did we? Oh, last thing the Turners. People foster children for years, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about that, Courtney? Um, I feel like as soon as they took that little girl home and knowing they have a little girl the same age, it would be tragic to snatch. What is her name? May? May. It would be tragic to snatch May out of that house. And guess what they're going to do? They, they they're better gonna, keep her. They're going to they they're gonna snatch her away. And I'm I, telling you. They, they cannot snatch her away. They're going to. This gonna. family, what person with a soul can come and see that situation and be like, nope, we're taking her anyway. Uh, people who had tuberculosis for a year and have been counting on getting May in their family. <sighs> Those people. But she's so happy. And they had their cute little dresses on that were and like that matching. kind of matched. It was so cute. Can I tell people she's my sister? And then like the older son is picking them up and spinning them around. Oh, and yeah. then they had baby. They are just building it all in to break our hearts. I'm telling you right now. You know that's true. Oh, you know that it's true. I will that's gonna be Oh gosh. Okay. I'm I'm hoping not. I hope that's another happy ending for the Turner household just like They've gotten too many happy endings Teddy. lately. I think it's about to be like crushed and devastated. Oh, no. We're we're on what is it episode 3 so we still have a couple more. We're right in the middle yeah, of the season. We're in the middle. Series. Yeah. yeah. How did that happen so fast? I know. Uh let's talk some news and information. It's not exactly gossip. Call the Midwife was again praised for handling a delicate issue of cleft lips and palates with sensitivity and love. Twitter was all abuzz as folks shared their own stories about their cleft lip and palate issues, and it was a beautiful conversation. You might want to just look at the hashtag of Call the Midwife and take a look at them. And also, regarding the loss of children, Trisha Elliott, who is at Trisha underscore the underscore doc, said, if you want to be reassured that there are is still good in the world. Have a read of the hashtag call the midwife and watch people who are total strangers exchange exchanging stories of love with each other over their experiences of bereavement of a young child. Mm. What a great program. Wow, wow. Again, providing a public service. And speaking of public service and measles, Ooh. a growing anti-vaccine movement in Europe. There's one happening here in the U.S. as well. Fueled by social media and anti-establishment populists is putting lives at risk and may be to blame for measles outbreaks surging to a 20-year high. high. Scary. Um, an analysis of World Health Organization data shows that measles cases in Europe were projected 
for 2018 to more than double that of 2017, the highest this century. There have been two deaths, twice as many as in 2017. Um, yeah, so s experts are warning that skeptics are driving down immunization rates for measles, HPV against cervical cancer, the flu, and other diseases. And the opinions are increasingly being amplified by right-wing populists, especially skeptical of medical authorities. Oh, and in the yeah. U.S., health officials in Portland, Oregon, have declared a public state, a state of emergency, emergency. Yep. health emergency, because of an outbreak of measles that has infected 22 people so far. In 2018, 349 individual cases of measles were confirmed in 26 states. This is the second greatest number of annual cases reported since measles was eliminated in the United States it's in 2000. 2000. So listen, people who are fully vaccinated against the measles have very little risk, very little risk of becoming infected. The vaccine provides upwards of 95% protected, but measles is one of the most infectious viruses known and will infect 90% of unimmunized people who breathe it in. That's bonkers. People, we had the vaccine. Discovered, ready to go in 1963. They perfected it by 89. Apparently, like once in 89, they discovered that a booster shot was necessary. Mm. And that literally took us down to zero, zero cases by 2000. Right. Why, people, why would we go backwards? Why? And I love that I'm sure Heidi Thomas is kind of looking at the current state. And, yeah. you know, that's part of the reason why this story came up. I mean, granted, we're in the right time period for it to be coming up for Call the Midwife. But I would not at all be surprised if, you know, she this was a an answer to the people who are anti-vax. Yeah. And it's I didn't realize how much anti-vax was a movement as well in Europe as it was here. Yeah. I thought we were being dumb Americans. Yeah. I'm not trying to judge. Look, hey, I, I understand that, especially in America, the medicine and the community of medicine has not always been on the up and up, yeah. um, especially as a person of color. There is definitely some sketchy history there, which is why I still fight with my parents about certain yep. things that they need to have taken care of for themselves. Yeah. But I'm 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 still baffled. Like yeah. something like me, like, come on, like a measles vaccine. Do you want to talk a little bit about SIDS? Oh, SIDS. Yeah. So it sudden infant death syndrome, which is SIDS didn't actually get that label until it was 1969 when they first started using it. Oh, wow. Um, obviously, it still has not been completely eradicated. Um, there's In the U.S., there's uh, over 4,000 deaths that still occur because of it. Um, in Europe, I think it was 2,800. Um, so the numbers are still higher than they would like to be. Yeah. They did have some success in the 70s figuring out some preventative measures mm -hmm. to kind of decrease the numbers, some things like um, no co-sleeping, Apparently, nicotine was an issue. Um, really? And uh, da, da, what's on my risk factors and shared beds and tobacco and the co-sleeping was an issue. Right. But then recently, though, in the 2000s, they've started to discover that perhaps it's actually something in the brain stem that is not developing properly, which causes the brain not to oh. communicate properly when there are breathing challenges. So that research is still being done, wow. but they're looking at it right now that it looks like it might be linked to the brain stem. If they can like solve that. <gasps> my gosh, right? Yeah. I don't Amazing. know, because I just, I mean, it's one thing to, you know, pass away from the measles or for something that you can name, but to, the idea that there's just, just yeah. nothing, like you have no explanation. Your baby's totally fine and you wake up the next morning and... Yeah, he was a thriving, her her baby was a thriving, yeah, thriving, thriving healthy, healthy baby. Child. Yeah, mm -hmm. so keep going, guys. Scientists yeah, and all of that. Absolutely. Yeah, the struggle is still there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the rest of the season. We need to be on the lookout for some more difficult and progressive shows mm -hmm. on in this series. There is a storyline involving sexually transmitted diseases in pregnancy, Ooh. where expectant wives are infected by wayward husbands. Ooh. There is one young woman who discovers she has hidden male genitalia. We did talk Which about we, this, right? We actually kind of thought this was going to be this, this episode. Gonna be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's coming. She's found to be intersex with no chance of ever bearing children. Interesting. And the subject abortion of abortion comes up again, again. next week. Yep. Yep. yep, yep. So uh, just want to say that Heidi Thomas is very proud of the whole series about it being about women, whether they're giving birth, delivering babies, or performing any of the varied roles seen on the show. But she says, quote, we now said the word vagina several times, but we've never said the word femi feminism because we don't preach it. We live, live it. it. 
You don't have to say it if you are it. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> Cheers. So that is what we have for news and gossip. It's not oh. gossip. It's almost never gossip here. It's information. It is information. It's more information. Um, thanks for that stuff on SIDS. Yeah, Anything else bit. you want to talk about about the show? Um, we go? Oh, I will. We didn't comment on this, but I just have to say that Sheila's face when baby Teddy had to get the shot. Oh, yes. That was so. I keep uh, this is my term of the century. That was so great, but like she just was hilarious, and the the fear and the uh, it was fantastic. yeah. She went through like three different emotions oh, yeah. in All, that like her eyes second. Were like, wait, huh? What? No. Wait, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, but oh, right. I have to be on board with yes, this. Yes, I'm on yeah. board with this. I'm on board with this. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was very really beautifully cool portrayed by her. I yeah, will say it was too. A cool moment. I'm glad you brought that yeah, up. I'm very grounded in mominess because yeah. you're doctor, you're scientist, or you're nurse, nurse. scientist. Yeah. But then your mom, and you don't want your baby, and it's a trial, and it might not even, you know. So that was there really are cool. risks. Yeah, yeah yes, absolutely. Know? I love that. Love yeah, those layers, guys. It was Keep really good. In. Really yeah. good. Appreciate it. Well, hopefully we will have John here with us next week. I can't imagine we won't. Uh, um, he'll be back. He'll perhaps be he'll wear something snappy for us because <laughs> we've missed him. Uh, Courtney, tell people where they can find you. You guys can find me all over the social media universe at Stuart Starlet, and you can find me at Tamara Berg on Twitter. My website is tamarascentral.com. Thanks, everybody, for being with us. We will episode. see you next week for Call the Midwife. Navarro and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first. We're the biggest in the world. And we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.